All right, guys, it's Josh, and we're back at it with some more MX bikes, and we are racing one of the worst bikes in the game, the Fantic 250. Now, is it the worst bike? Probably not, but it's definitely not my favorite, but I will show you guys my setup at the very end, and if you guys have something that's way better, let me know in the comment section. We got a seven-minute plus one-lap race on the 2022 Unadilla, and I haven't raced this place in, like, two years, so this should be a lot of fun. This track is so much different than how the tracks are, like, built today. Uh, the ruts are are way way different uh but here we go can i get a good start on this thing maybe not really holy crap just wait for everybody to crash just go right through everybody there we go there we go yep i somehow made it out alive top three let's go i'm literally still top three on a fantic 250 i'm the best i got two people inside of each other here i got two different people inside of two different people okay gotta love it but since we're riding this 2022 Unadilla, I figured uh, let's talk about Unadilla in general. I got a couple people in the VC with me right now. And uh, who is winning? Who is winning? Ken, Ken Roxon is coming back. Uh, you have a lot of different tra uh, team changes. Shane McGrath is now on Mad Kawasaki. Also forgot to mention that March Banks will be on PC for Unadilla. But Shane McGrath actually just posted on IG that he got fired from Hep Suzuki. So that's kind of breaking news a little bit. There's also some breaking news that Ty Masterpool has officially signed a two-year deal with Kawasaki. So that is massive. Uh, that is actually so, so sick. So I'm excited to see. I'm honestly excited to see how he does for Supercross because we all know Ty is not a great Supercross rider. But having that like full offseason under his belt with a factory team, especially Kawasaki... I think that he goes out there and gets top sevens. I don't think anything special, but I do think that he can get like top tens and then he'll save everything for outdoors. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the breaking news today, which I thought was pretty interesting. I also heard that Unadilla is going to be a mud fest. Everybody else hear that? Pretty sure they did. It's been raining like all week, I guess, in New York. You hear uh, that, Stoney? Yeah, Stone, do not listen to Davey, Dude, okay? We do not want a mud do race. <laughs> do <laughs> we, it. <laughs> do we have a mud race? Bro, I remember a couple years ago. Who was it? It was for the Amateur Supercross series that we did. Shout out, little plug here. I won that series. Uh, not because someone quit. It doesn't matter about that, all right? But uh, they did the Atlanta race. So a couple years ago, Atlanta was like... Uh, a mud fest there's no way that my front tire clips the edge of that rut dude there's no way i was so i was like vibing on this but yeah we had that guy just hit the side of the pole and just went flying uh shout out to b-dub here that's uh this guy's fast as hell on a 250 uh but yeah anyways does do we make it a little mud race like do we throw on the rain effect does he add the track to be more slick he should I, that would add some complications. I feel like if he does that, he needs to add a clean, like, smoother track, too. Not a smoother track, but, like, a, a regular oh. track. If that makes sense. Not just, like, a mutter. Last time he made a rainy track, the servers got deep out, so. That is true. San Diego Supercross. I remember that wholeheartedly because I actually qualified for that on the 450. And then we didn't even get to race it. So, uh, I do remember that. But no, I don't. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys think that would be sick. Or even in the stream right now, because uh, obviously we're streaming. Uh, so I think it would be kind of cool. Unadilla, Cooper Webb's back. Uh, Ken Roxon's back. Uh, does Cooper Webb finish ahead of Ken Roxon, or does Ken Roxon finish ahead of Cooper Webb? Ken Roxon. I'm it. thinking Ken Roxon. That's just my opinion. And if it's supposed to be a mudder, I think Ken Roxon's a little bit better in the mud. No? Pretty sure he is. He's got that GP background. Which I really don't think makes a difference anymore because he's been outside of MXGP for over 10 years. So I don't think that really matters that much. Uh, but if it is a mutter, maybe Tom Vial. Is Tom Vial good in the mud? Didn't he win Daytona in the mud? Won something in the mud. That should be interesting. For Bud's Creek, uh, Eli Tomac will be back. And I saw on Twitter from Pulp MX, he said that... Uh, the Motocross of Nations team will not be announced at Unadilla like it normally is, but Bud's, after Bud's Creek, so they can see how Tomac rides, as well as what's happening with Deegan. In my honest opinion, I think Deegan needs to fucking do it, alright? Um, he 
basically backed away from it last year. I think he needs to do it this year. He's the fastest 250 guy that we have on the planet right now. Uh, well, in the U.S., not the planet. But, I mean, maybe I'm just biased here because I want to see him race the GP guys. But I think he really needs to do it. I think everybody would love to see that. And I also think that, like, the track that they're going to, Matterly Basin, isn't a difficult track at all. I think it would be a pretty decent track for the U.S. guys, in my, my opinion. Oh, get in the road. I'm excited to have motocross back finally. Dude, it's been like three weeks, has it not? I feel like it's been like so long that we've even like watched anything. I know that there's also a, a, a Brazil arena cross happening that night as well. So potentially we do a watch party for that. I really don't know yet. Cause like watch parties go to like what three normally like around three ish, 233. Then we got to edit the video. We got to do a bunch of shit. And fantasy draft. And, and we got a fantasy draft. It, that day might be kind of chalked. I'm not going to cap. Might be kind of chalked for me. I know that a couple of people want me to do the watch party for the Brazil stuff. And I was supposed to do it on Saturday for the Brazil Nationals. But unfortunately, I had some things come up. So oh I didn't want to do that. I am battling with B Dub here, man. I think this is B. No, this is Froxy. B Dub's right behind me. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting that that corner right there is atrocious. You have to slow up for that. PC's becoming star. Well, yeah, because I mean, you have a thousand riders? Yeah. So wait, so that kind of makes me wonder, like, are they going to get rid of a couple guys? Are they going to keep them all? You know what I mean? Now you have Drew Adams. You also have Ty Masterpool, Cameron McAdoo, Austin Forkner, Seth Hammaker. I'm missing someone, am I not? Uh, March Banks. March Banks. They have six riders? From like all the conversations that I've seen regarding like tie to master, tie to PC, it was just saying that like, that is way too many riders for my team. Like we, we don't have an open spot, blah, blah, blah. So that kind of makes me feel like maybe one guy's leaving, potentially. I heard rumors that maybe at Forkner's leaving. I don't know why they I would, would have, have to think. I'd have to think both nerds getting the boot finally. I, it, I feel like it might be the only guy that would get the boot. You know what or I mean? Or maybe he's retiring. I doubt that he retires from everything that I've seen that like he wants to come back riding and you know he can win and stuff. So I hope he doesn't get the boot because I think, personally speaking, we saw it this year. We legit saw it this year that he can win. You know, we saw how many times did he win? Twice, I think? Before he Twice crashed out? Three races, yeah. Yeah, like. He was going to win that championship if he doesn't crash out, in my opinion. Um, so I don't think he gets the boot. I think it's got to be someone else. But then again, maybe they're just... Maybe they're just banking on Ty Masterpool to do good outdoors. And maybe they're just, like, playing it safe here. Because think about it right now. Oh, they have Levi Kitchen. We're, we're forgetting Levi Kitchen. Oh, we're done. <laughs> so, we're casuals. So. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we are so casuals. Oh, my God. We always forget Levi. I know, dude. For real. He's just, uh, yeah. I saw his Dirk Shark video today for Monster. And then it kind of reminds me of what he said on the podium. Yeah, I had a, too much of an eventful week. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> That's all I thought about. Like, no wonder why he went, like, outside of the top 10 Moto 1. Because he was doing, like, come up, like so many press runs. But, uh, Same week you do Gomez. Yeah, it's just it's way too much, but... But yeah, I don't know. What I was going to say, though, is like maybe Ty is like that, that like fill-in rider that they're signing for two years so they don't lose him because they know he can maybe stay healthy where the other guys just can't stay healthy. Does that kind of make sense? Where it's like they're banking on Ty to stay healthier compared to the other guys so they have riders during the motocross season. Because if you look, if you think about it, Forkner doesn't get hurt. Handmaker doesn't get hurt. Um, McAdoo doesn't get hurt. Ty Mashapul is probably not on that team. Right? My honest opinion. I, without that. Because, like, they only have two riders now, and it's it's Levi and Masterpool. So, I don't know. It should be interesting. Shout out to Froxy. Letting me get in that top five. I appreciate that top four. As long as I don't crash on this last lap. But, but yeah, I am excited for... I am excited for Unadilla. I think it's going to be freaking epic. Uh, even if it's a mud race, bro, I think it's going to be pretty exciting regardless. So, I'm excited for it. But if I could say one thing, 
The Fantic 250 might not be the worst bike. I just did a pretty decent race. You guys gotta try it for yourself. Let me show you guys the setup that I was rocking. It's pretty stock though. So this was what I was running for the suspension. Pretty much stock. Drivetrain 1452 and then geometry. Try it out. Let me know. If you guys find a better setup than this, let me know too because I maybe want to try it.